Holy Rose. Okay, I just got a text message, and we're going to do another take. I, I saw the first two episodes of Velma, and I that's probably all I'm going to watch. I definitely am going to <laughs> give my review here, kind of, I guess, prematurely. But I, I think I'm on the same boat as most other people. I don't think as harshly as the rest of the internet does about the show, but I am definitely think I understand where it comes deserved. I, I do think that the show has potential, but the underlying problem isn't necessarily the show itself it is, it is hear me out here for a second like starting with the race swapping i personally never really care about race swapping and i it doesn't bother me as long as it's good characters or it adds to the story a lot of other things have race swapping in it like nick fury uh samuel jackson plays them and as, on top of that invincible when that came out uh, half the cast and crew was race and gender swapped and nobody even noticed or if they noticed they didn't care so I just I don't I don't really see the problem with race swapping it, it, if you can make it work you can make it work I honestly honestly most of the nitpicks can be solved with just good writing and to me that uh, Velma kind of fails in, in that out like but we're gonna get to that a matter of fact how about we just get into that now a lot of people talk about the humor and uh, this is where I think a lot of people are just too harsh uh, with, with the show. Um, I do see the sense of humor. The first episode is so bad <laughs> when it comes to the sense of humor. But then by the second episode, you you start to see a pattern. There is there is an evolving pattern, and this is written by a comedian. And when you take that into effect, you kind of see it like a comedian. Uh, if you watch any stand-up talk shows, you know that they kind of go into – they tell stories, and they relate it to real-life situations, and those stories end up having kind of like a punchline to them. And, and that's kind of what the entirety of the Velma show is, is it's one – gigantic punchline one after the other so much so that it takes away from the actual depth of of the show itself um i i hear a lot of people that say that this doesn't have a target audience and i i kind of disagree with that i i do think their target audience is kind of like the people that watch family guy and and uh rick and morty and and, and thing kind of raunchy maybe big mouth as well things raunchy and just kind of they don't care about anything and they want to make fun of society and, and everyone takes everything too seriously. And why can't we say what we want to say? You know how comedians feel like they might be stepping on eggshells for the much of the same reason of that. So I, I can see where they're pushing that. I, I'm laughing because I'm thinking about it. It's really cringe. It's so cringe on, on some of the situations they put into. They put some hyper violence into it. But there are... Uh, there's there's repeating trends. Some are very subtle and and others are very on hand. Kind of like uh, just uh, Fred being a big dumb kid and and acting like a big dumb dumb kid uh, in multiple situations. But on top of that, uh, the, things like the hyper violence of someone getting their foot chopped off, and later on we see that he loses his foot again, and, and violence gets kind of ignored. But that that one's a little more subtle in that in that area. But the the sense of humor is in my opinion it, it's consistent and and that consistency is, is fine it stays the same throughout the the whole uh, show or at least the first two episodes and and i think it's going to continue doing that same thing my problem and i think what what uh, other people's problem with it is that the frequency at which it, it would hit and also uh, i don't want to say the tone but necessarily like whenever someone is shown on screen it's almost like, okay, how much laughs can we get out of this? So, like, Fred, the, the joke is that he's a white guy. And, that, and that's the joke. He's white and he has a small penis. Uh, you know, Velma, the joke is that she's selfish and she's a know-it-all. And there is a bit of character progression in that. And I'll, I'll go over that uh, later on. But also the same thing with, like... Uh, uh, Daphne's moms, uh, they're, they're lesbians, they're cops, but they're dumb. They're dumb cops that can't do anything right, and they put themselves in situations, in, in real-world situations, but with a comedic twist to them. And even the best friend, uh, the new Shaggy, uh, who, you know, he, he's going through his own tropes, but they're all self-aware of of the, the TV show, almost forth-breaking, but they're kind of making it a joke to themselves, and, and they're saying, oh, we're going to follow these trends and see, see where they lead us. And, and so I, I just think that making fun of everything, everyone, all the time, uh, it, it gets worn out. 
and and it, it it's no longer as interesting um, whenever you're doing it, and it makes the show lack depth. So whenever uh, Velma, who comes off as a very unlikable character, where you see where she sees her flaws in the second episode, how she's a know-it-all and she needs to not think that she knows everything and that she's above everyone else and she's super judgmental. Uh, there's a little bit of character progression there, but because it is a TV show, you can assume that she's going to go back into those same trends because she's going to keep doing those, those quippy one-liners. Uh, like Almost imagine like Marvel quippy one-liners, but it just... <laughs> Way, way raunchier and way more often. And I think that because of the frequency at which we're, we're getting them, it really does take away from, from the entirety of the, the show. Um, so I was surprised to see that it actually had a story, considering how often people were, were, were dumping on it. And I yes, I've heard the theory that, you know, the, the idea that it's supposed to just get hate-watched entirety and uh, we're supposed to hate uh, the... It's going to make fun of everything so people hate watch it so it can be successful strictly through hate watching. I don't believe that. I think what they're doing is they're taking uh, they're taking situations, tropes, and they're making fun of them and they're putting a modern twist to it by using – just taking things straight out of the internet. Uh, I mean it, it's as toxic as Twitter uh, comment logs and – rightfully so and to, to top it all off when things get this much attention for being bad they don't normally have a track record for continuing to succeed uh, i mean even the new uh well, ghostbusters it, it was got a lot of attention but failed uh morbius got a ton of attention and also failed it even had a second chance it was trying to ride the coattails of the memes that it was writing going on and it, it failed even worse the second time so i i don't think i people who are freaking out being like stop watching it don't hate watch it because it got rated as the number one animated uh series on Las Velma has been the number one top trending animated series on HBO Max today uh I don't think HBO Max really has any other animated series so that's it's just kind of saying that popularity is you know saying is that it's good but I'm not to worry about it usually this stuff kind of falls off and goes into it if you don't believe that I mean look look at the score and and I'm kind of leaning on the the 57 maybe not 57 percent but definitely like I understand where the the critics are coming from audience scores usually when you have these kind of like different numbers and it feels like the critics aren't connecting with the audience I think it's because like audience scores are based on nitpicks where critics scores are more like analytical critiques kind of like what i've been kind of saying here where i sound like i'm defending the show but i'm not really defending it where someone might say oh there's no story progression there's i, I didn't see it there's very little of it and it it's so much so that it does seem non-existent and the jokes or maybe it's too woke. I don't think it's woke. I just think it's making fun of everything at all times consistently, which which has some woke things in there and some non-woke things in there. I mean, it's plenty racist, plenty violent, and plenty stupid. I definitely understand where the audiences are coming from, and I, and I totally see where the critics are coming from as well. Maybe I'm just being uh, too nice, but... Overall, I don't recommend this show. I don't recommend you go watch Velma. Uh, if you want to go check it out just to be like, was it as bad as people say it is? Yeah, you'll, you'll probably cringe and have a good laugh with your buddies making fun of it. Other than that, I, I doubt you're not going to get into it. And, and reasons so, it, it lacks depth. It, it spends too much time trying to be a comedy. It, it forgets to tell a story and even though there is a story in the background that's the thing it's in the background and nobody's looking at the background we're all looking at the foreground uh maybe maybe it gets better in time that's just me being optimistic but i did i did see some potential in the first episode or sorry the second episode however it's not much for potential it, it's like like a like a one percent less than one percent chance um and, and to compare this with other shows where like even family guy that I, I want to say makes very similar jokes and can be very, very stupid at, at plenty of times as well. There is uh, there is a problem and a problem being solved by the end of the episode, whereas Velma does the same thing. It it's it itself does not put that as the priority. 
the priority being let's try to get as many laughs as possible. Let's try to relate to everybody. And in doing so, they push everyone away and make everyone laugh at them, not with them. Matter of fact, okay, here's probably my my worst take of it all. I think the fact that this has the Scooby-Doo brand on it is really what hurts it. This is the, other than the depth, the fact that these are not the characters that we know. There's no nostalgia behind this behind, besides making references every once in a while. Honestly, you take away the Scooby-Doo brand, I wouldn't be surprised if there there was a group of people that enjoyed this and defended it. But that, that That's my biggest hot take. So tell me your thoughts. Um, if I were to rate this out of 10, it would be do not recommend. Don't go watch it out of 10. All right, guys. Goodbye. Subscribe. Take care. Until next time. Play nice.